I would like to share something with you that really might challenge your faith. It might be a little scary even. I'm about to ask you two questions. They're the easiest questions in the world that might be the hardest questions to answer of your entire life. I want to share a story with you that has greatly impacted my life. It's completely changed uh, everything. To do that, I need to introduce you to a character in my life. She's been a very influential force for me. Her name is Mimi Burns. And uh, when I was 26, I was in the lowest place that I could ever imagine. I was in my personal hell. She asked me these two very simple questions. First, she said, how old were you when you first started making up your mind? When you decided, maybe you decided like, my parents aren't right about everything. Not just the, you know, not just the two year old, you learned the word no and you wanted to be rebellious. But when did you really start figuring out, oh my gosh, my parents may not know everything. Okay. Now I know we of course all go through that phase where we know everything and our parents know nothing. And then we kind of grow out of that hopefully. But when did you first realize that everything wasn't just the way your parents said it was? And uh, my answer for that was probably seven or eight. A lot of people still haven't had that moment. A lot of people 50 and 60 years old have never had that moment. And that's okay. If that's where you are, maybe today's your day. Maybe today is the day that you start deciding for yourself. Of course, you're thinking, well, that's not me. I've made up my own mind for a long time. And that's what I thought too when I was 26 years old. So she asked me that question. Then she asked me probably an even simpler much harder to answer question, which was, how many of your beliefs have you held since before that time? And now this was a mind blow for me. It terrified me because truly I had to, I mean, when I answered that honestly, it was like all of them, all of my beliefs, basically. Um, everything that I said I believed, you know, and I was a, I was a youth leader and I was a, um, a worship leader and all this stuff. And I always claimed that I never had any doubts and, you know, like my faith was strong and all this stuff. And I remember saying that at the same time as I was having major turmoil within me. I had doubts, not just about like, what's the nature of God and what's the, you know, um, does God love me? Uh, things like that. I had doubts about like, does God exist? You know, and I think it's very natural to have, to have, you know, questions like that. Um, but there were times that I was just like, no, it's not possible. God can't exist. And the reason that I thought that was because the only way that I was allowed to have God exist in my life was within the parameters that other people had set up for me. And so I had to believe the entire, you know, my entire holy book was, was completely in error. And that's what we're taught about uh, most faiths, you know, that this is a perfect book and you are not to question it. If you question it, you're in a very scary place. And so there was this fear factor and, uh, and then also it said things that I really didn't feel were right. And so I really had to take a hard look at all, the, all those most difficult questions that I had never really looked at before. I believed that God was peaceful and that God was loving. So I found myself face to face with the hardest questions, but the most elementary questions that I had never had the courage or never felt the permission really to answer. And, uh, and then I decided one day, I, it was okay for me to dig into those things and take a critical look at my faith. And it's okay for you to take a critical look at your faith. What parts of it make you better? What parts of it make you worse? And I do believe that there are a lot of parts of my old faith that made me worse. One of those being, I had to just accept the, for me, it was the Bible. You know, I was raised Catholic. I switched over to a non-denominational church, but I was always just spoon fed, you know, oh, here's a nice verse. Here's a pleasant sounding verse. Here's something that goes in line with what you feel. And I mean, I, I love those verses to this day. What I wasn't told was about all the verses of violence and of downright petty actions by this omnipotent, all loving, all present being that I call God. One of the things that I wondered was how is it that God created everyone, loves everyone equally, 
forgives everyone eternally, and can't stop loving us, and also said to one group of his favorite children to go decimate other groups of his own children. That never made sense to me. I can't buy it. And I never could buy it. And when I was having to say that I did buy it, there was this piece of me subconsciously, you know, so so consciously I would say, oh yes, yes, I am totally in line with this. And I was so terrified of the damnation or of the, you know, the judgment that would come upon me if I didn't say I believed this. And so I just said I did. But there was this piece of me. It's almost like I'm trying to hold it all together in this boat. And there's this huge leak, you know, and I'm always just, oh my gosh, no, I totally believe. I totally believe. I'm, I'm bailing myself out all the time, deflecting simple questions with really complex answers rather than just saying, maybe that's not how it is. And I think it's a really important thing that we come to that place where we say, hold on, maybe this is a bad boat. Maybe not all this boat is waterproof. And I want to encourage you, take a look at your own faith in that way. Maybe your book is not completely right. And I know I'm going to get so much hate for this, and if that's what it spawns, that's okay. That's just where those people are, are right now. But if you are mature enough in your human beingness that you can actually take a look at it like this without just saying, no, 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 you're, this is not how it is. This is, if you, can, if you can take your fingers out of your ears, stop shouting la la la, you may find some really incredible things that completely change your life.